Hello and welcome to this lesson, which will provide you with an overview of multiple based valuations. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to Firstly, define and explain the basic concept of multiple based valuation. Secondly, understand the standard types of multiple used in valuation practice. And thirdly, understand the six steps in performing a multiple based valuation. To begin with, multiples are a very popular way of valuing an organization or asset. The basic premise is that similar assets should sell at similar prices. And so when organizations are comparable, you can use the multiples approach to determine the value of one organization based on the value of another. Multiples are quick and easy to apply, but in many cases the method is too simple and neglects other key aspects of valuation, such as profitability or future growth rates. Hence, multiples should never be the only method of valuation applied, but they can be used to get a first idea of an organization's value. It is good practice to use multiples to complement the discounted cash flow valuation method. So, what is a multiple? Multiples are basically a ratio of an organization's value to a user selected parameter, such as revenues or profits. When starting a new valuation, the first step is to calculate multiples for a benchmark peer group of comparable organizations for which the valuation is known. The peer group should be comparable to the target organization in all key business aspects, such as target market and stage of evolution such as startup or mature. The value of the target organization is then calculated by multiplying the peer group's multiple with the respective key parameter or value driver of the target organization, such as revenues or profits. For multiple based valuations, you need to decide if the multiple should be based on the equity value or the enterprise value. Your choice very much depends on who the valuation is for. If it is for shareholders, then choose the equity value, but if it is for debt and equity holders, then choose the enterprise value. You should also ensure to work with consistent value metrics and value drivers. So, for example, for valuations based on equity value, the parameter or key driver must be net income or the book value of equity to compute multiples such as the price earnings ratio or the price book ratio. Multiple based valuations can have a historical or forecast bias, depending on the choice of parameter you use. For example, the price earnings ratio can be based on historical or projected revenues. Historical multiples are often published in the business press, but forward-looking multiple-based valuations will generally provide superior insights into the value-creating potential of an organization. However, projections may not be available for the key value driver that you want to use, in which case you must work with historical figures. Now let's turn your attention to the different types of multiple used in valuation practice. The slide shows the multiples which have become standard practice, such as enterprise value divided by EBITDA or the price earnings ratio. The choice very much depends on who the valuation is for, shareholders or debt and equity holders. Take note of the pros and cons for each type of multiple when selecting for your valuation. As well as standard financial ratios, you should also consider operative multiples, which allows you to custom design the valuation to fit your industry. For example, in the airline industry, consider enterprise value divided by revenue per seat mile, or in telecoms, enterprise value 
divided by number of homes passed. The more similar the type of valuation multiple used by the peer group and the valuation candidate, the more accurate the valuation. In this final section of the lesson, you will learn how to perform a multiple-based valuation in six steps and apply the theory to a case study. The six steps are Firstly, to define the peer group of organisations. Secondly, to select the multiples suitable to value the candidate organisation or asset. Thirdly, to develop the data set for the valuation analysis. Fourthly, to calculate the multiples for the peer group of organisations. Fifthly, to apply the multiples to the candidate organisation or asset. And lastly, to interpret and derive the range of values for your conclusion. Here is the short case study you will work with during the remainder of this lesson. Please take time to read it before progressing. The first task is to select a peer group of comparable organisations. This does require significant effort and you will usually trade off between high comparability and having a sufficient size of the group. A high level of industry expertise is required to compile the list, so do ask for help if you need it. The ideal peer group is comparable in terms of industry, business mix, size and asset structure. Also, the group should be comparable in terms of financial characteristics, geographical presence, customer base and cost structure. For an even better fit, the peer group should ideally be comparable on both current position and expected future strategy. Ultimately, the more similar the peer group and the valuation candidate, the more accurate the valuation. The second task in your valuation is to select the multiple suitable to evaluate the candidate. Here, consider the kind of information that is available to you and what kind of multiples are usually applied in the industry. For Telco, three main types of multiples have been chosen, based on the information available across all peer organisations and the key industry drivers. The third key task is to develop your data set. Here, Access the different sources to research and collect the data you need. For example, Bloomberg or Thomson One are useful sources for company accounts and share price data. And Merger Market is a useful source for mergers and acquisitions data. The fourth task is to calculate the multiples for the peer group of comparable organizations. Start by calculating either the enterprise or equity value for each peer organization. Then divide by the appropriate value metric such as EBITDA or number of customers. For the Telco case study, the slide shows how you would calculate the multiples for company A in the peer group of comparable organizations. Take some time to work through the calculations and repeat the exercise for the other companies in the peer group. The answers follow on the next slide. Here is a summary of the calculated valuation multiples for Telco's comparable organisations. Next up, the fifth step in your valuation analysis is to calculate the minimum, maximum, average and median of the selected peer group for each multiple. Then, multiply the target organization valuation metric with the respective median or average multiple. Remember to differentiate between equity and enterprise multiples. And finally, calculate the implied enterprise and equity value for the target organization. The next three slides show you how to do this.
This slide shows the calculation of the implied enterprise and equity value based on the enterprise value divided by the EBITDA multiple. This slide shows the calculation of the implied enterprise and equity value based on the forward price earnings multiple. And this slide shows the calculation of the implied enterprise and equity value based on the enterprise value divided by number of customers multiple. Once you have applied the multiples to the candidate organization or asset, the last task is to summarize your results, like in the table on the slide, then derive your value range. It helps to visualize your results like as shown on the slide. The aim here is to identify any anomalies and provide a rough estimate of the value range. In Telco's instance, you can estimate a value range between 29 million euros and 52 million euros based on the multiple based methodology. In summary, you have learnt to define and explain the basic concept of multiple based valuation. You have also understood the standard types of multiple used in valuation practice and used a case study to understand the six key steps in performing a multiple based valuation. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.